this is a, a short independent adventure game. Fingers crossed it works. Um, yeah, here we go. Called Tommy Gun Witches. It's by Cosmic Void. Yeah. Um, so this is kind of a uh, investigative super. Oh no, you can't hear the sound. There you go. You can hear the sound now. Uh, investigative, um, a supernatural uh, mystery story, as far as I can tell. Um, let's have a look at the credits. Tommy Gun Witches, a cosmic void game. Art and coding by Aviv Salinas. Story and design by Aviv Salinas. Music by Eric Matthias. W.soundimage.org. For a full list of sound effects by Eric Matthias, refer to soundcredits.txt. And then we get the song titles, list of Patreon supporters. So what I can do is, um, I somewhere here I have got the itch page for this, so I'm going to pop that in chat for everybody. There we go. So let's see, can I change, while I'm at it, can I change the description of the game that we're playing? Great, this is it. Right, uh, we want a new game. I'm jolted awake by my phone going off. It's the boss, the chief inspector. The man's well, well sloshed, just like any other night. Something's up. Meet me at room 12 of the Zephyr Lodge Motel. He slurs between swigs, the door's unlocked. That, what kind of invitation is this? I'll be right there. I wonder if it's another case of a black cat suspected of being a witch in hiding. With the economy going down faster than a roller coaster with faulty brakes, tensions are rising, and people are seeing witches everywhere. And yet, in all my 12 years of service at the Bureau of Witchcraft and Anomaly Control, I've only encountered three witches. I down my coffee in one gulp, retrieve my sentinel uniform from under the bed, and head out. Well, ah, the Zephyr Lodge Motel. As grimly, as grimy and decrepit as I remember. A den of swindlers, hacksters and hustlers. My boss, well into his sixth or seventh beer, is engrossed in a black and white western. Chief Inspector Dunn. Lucas, you're finally here. Hick. This time, it's the real deal. I believe we've got a live one. Sentinel Lucas Barber. Not another black cat then. Chief Inspector Dunn. I don't believe so. Uh, Chief Inspector Dunn. Dustin Heights 9, Hick. Neighbor reported a scream. The police found the guy dead in his room. Someone had taken out his intestines. To top it off, the body was reeking of sulfuric acid. Sentinel Lucas Barber. Guess it's clear we ain't chasing no black cat this time around. Where's the body now? At the morgue. We'll check the guy's room first. With your visor, you might discover hidden evidence. The witch left behind, the kind the police won't find. Anything peculiar about this guy making him a target? We asked, sent Sentinel Lucas Wilderbar. Chief Inspector Dunn says, Not that we can tell, the poor sod. Anthony Maxwell pushed papers for a plastics company. Sentinel Lucas Wilderbar, a filing clerk. He achieved an unexpected milestone, becoming the first ever filing clerk on a witch's hit list. Who would have thought the plastic supply business packed such thrilling perils? Chief Inspector Dunn, who? You still here, Lucas? Sentinel Lucas Barber, on my way out, Chief Inspector. A brief tutorial. Left click on objects, interact with them. A brightly lit detective icon indicates. What's a detective icon? Whoa, there's a softboard egg there, amazing. Um, additional interactions. Access the map by left clicking on the map icon at the bottom right of the screen. Um, right, hover over the bag icon at the bottom left to access your inventory. Uh, press the escape key for uh, options or click on the cog icon at the top left. Okay, uh, that looks like, I'm not sure what that icon looks like. Is that a detect, oh it is, it's a detective's head with a fedora on, right? I thought it was some kind of um, ice pop or something. Right, so that's the chief inspector, that's our cog. That's the soft boiled egg. I'm just 
I, I must admit, I found that tutorial a bit hard to focus on once I'd seen the softball egg. Um, right. Well, okay. Well, let's save. Save. There you go. Plot one. Uh, egg. Does the egg repel witchcraft? Asked Lucas, Chief Inspector. What are you blathering about? Hick, was my dinner? You're 1am, do the Chief? That's what I'm going to follow up this beer with. Hick. Oh, we don't get to keep that. Uh, beer? Mind if I snag the beer, sir? Chief Inspector, you're on duty. Hick, Sentinel. Heavens, what is the force coming to you? Uh, Chief Inspector, Dunn always wears his witch detecting visors. It's been ages since the la he last tangled with one, but he's dead set on staying prepared. The man's been hitting the bottle again. When a witch and anomaly control across four states will drive any man to drink. If the witches start crawling out of the woodwork, causing havoc like they did during the riots of 68, we're in for a wild ride. Can I... Can I... Change the my method of interaction? Oh. The visor hasn't picked up anything beyond what I can see, already see. Oh, okay, so I can selectively choose those for a room. Uh, mind if I take this western cassette? Asked Lucas, Chief Inspector. That gonna help with your witch investigation? Lucas, I doubt it. Well, then keep your paws off my movie, Sentinel. Can I turn the TV off? Chief Inspector is watching a black and white western. During tough times, he switches to the home shopping network. So whatever's going on, he doesn't seem to get too alarmed just yet. Right, so I don't think there's anything we, else we can do other than look at these interesting items. I must say, uh, this is particularly gorgeous um, pixel artwork. I love the, the palette choice and um, yeah, the sense of form and personality is great. Ooh, we can go to the yellow thing, Zephyr Lodge and Dustin Heights 9. I like this map, this is nice. Um, Dustin Heights 9 I think was our location, wasn't it? Dustin Heights 9 was clean. Too clean for a murder scene. That was almost a poem. Not a single spattering of blood tainted the floor, bed or curtains, and the smell of sulfuric acid failed to linger in the air. It was evident that the killer, be it a witch or otherwise, sought to make a statement through a careful execution of violence. This was not an act of passion, but one carried out by a cold, calculated mind. Regardless, this was the appearance they intended to leave. Should the culprit be a witch, my visor ought to uncover some proof. Well, it's the only item I've got, so let's just do it. Oh my goodness, a new visor would piece together the whole scene at Dustin Heights 9. But nothing prepared me for this. There's no doubt Anthony Maxwell was done in by a witch. Strangely enough, she ditched her Tommy gun and mask. That's practically unheard of. Okay, this seems to be going for an interesting reinterpretation of witchcraft, which I'm I'm intrigued by. Okay, bed. The bed hasn't been slept in. Okay, there isn't a single drop of blood on the sheet or any sign of a struggle. Whoever did old Anthony, did old Anthony didn't care to surprise him in his sleep. Curt thick green curtains let none of the street light penetrate. I'm speculating here, but I'd say it's not a case of someone prizing their privacy too much. Anthony feared being watched. But why? Why would anyone be so interested in a file clerk to take to spying on him? How about this Tommy gun then? A witch's Tommy gun? Now that's a strange sight. While witches leave various items as calling cards at murder scenes, I've never known any to abandon their weapon of choice like this. It could mean this witch is renouncing her violent ways and disavowing her coven. But such an event hasn't occurred since Goblarding's defection in the 19th century. This witch must have a really good reason for leaving behind her prized possession. Okay, can we can we take any of this evidence or? Oh, oh, I like that sound. That's cool. Uh, right, let's have a look at the witch's mask. A witch's mask, huh? Witches do have a flair for theatrics when it comes to their crime scenes, but discarding their precious mask—that's a rare move for them. Typically, they leave behind a firecracker or a grenade. A warning that they'll strike again with their trademark violence. The only time a witch parts with her mask is if she's calling it quits. But this case seems different. This murder holds a special significance for the perpetrator. 
wasn't just another job, it was the grand finale for it she'd been preparing for. Okay, well... Can I... Let's get... No? Okay. Um... Dresser! Oh, I like that sound effect. Murder victims often have strange things stashed among their undergarments. Anthony is no exception. The photo found tucked away at the back of the drawer depicts a witch named Mion Chirp. As stated in the text on its reverse side, glancing over her shoulder, she appears to be a young woman in her 20s, displaying the characteristic vibrant green skin of a typical witch. Just what was her connection to Antony? At this point, it's reasonable to assume a witch has been involved with Antony's murder. The photo hidden in the drawer suggests you may have known a witch personally, who may or may not have been the murderer. I believe I've learned enough to share my findings with the inspector. I'd better head back. All right. There's nothing else to interact with, is there? No. All right. Zephyr Lodge. Inspector. Lucas. I've dug up proof, pointing to a witch's hand in Anthony Maxwell's murder. Chief Inspector. Witches can't leave well enough alone. Banish them to another dimension didn't stop them. They're like stubborn weeds pushing through the cracks. Implacable. <laughs> is what they are. So what is it you've found? Lucas. A witch's mask and a witch's tommy gun. Also found a snap of a young... A snap of a young witch tucked away. Chief Inspector. Witches don't usually abandon their tommy guns or masks. It's like breaking a sacred rule for them. And that, and that photo of the witch. She's a young woman. That means she was born post-banishment in that otherworldly hellhole. Makes it quite the mystery then. How did Anthony get mixed up with her? For anyone who knows anything about the so-called new witches, it's those dealers who traffic witches' narcotics into our dimension. They know what's what. Madeline's one such dealer, disguising herself as a juice vendor on Tootbury Avenue. Uh, paying her a visit might just pay off. Okay, can I have that softball egg now? No, no, shame. Okay, uh, have I got the photo? Yeah, a witch looking over her shoulder. Can I? A witch. I can't tell one from the owl. Chief Inspector. Okay, so we can use. <laughs> we can use items on other items and with the environment. Okay, right. So we've got Tutbury Avenue. Let's get there. Oh, look at this! Top we Avenue, where folks aren't what they seem, and everybody's got some secret game going on. Every politician taken out in the past ten years has managed to anger a mobster rooted in this place. So it's no surprise that when witches sought ways to sneak from the dimension they'd been banished to, back into this world, their accomplices were traced down to this location. Now it's time to have a little chat with Madeline. Ah, uh, that's Madeline. Who's this? This is Thunder. Okay. Pomegranates and grapefruits. Lucas, how much is a pomegranate? Madeline, this, the pomegranates themselves are not for sale. You buy the juice. Lucas, how about I pay double for what it's worth? Triple the price might do it, says Madeline. Lucas, is a deal. Have we got a pomegranate now? Bursting with juice. Well, that was weird. I am assuming there'll be a... Um... Is, is there a cystitis puzzle that we're going to have to solve? Okay, let's look to Madeline. Locating Madeline proved to be a straightforward task. Her juice stand has been a fixture in this spot for over a decade, vending pomegranate and grape juice. Um, and occasionally discreetly offering other substances to select customers. Judging from her face mask, I can tell that she's still concerned about the contagious Luciferian outbreak that swept through the city last year. Okay. Uh, I think we're drawing from life a little here. Now I only needed to figure out what would make her talk. Uh, Lucas, good evening. Or should I say good night? Anything exotic on offer? Madeline, today's exotic feature is yesterday's highlight. Pomegranate and grapefruit juice. Lucas, well that's auspicious. Two delights in one. Pomegranate's it. It is. Madeline, there you go. Luck's on your side. It's tomorrow's speciality too. Lucas, funny how luck has favoured me lately. Uh, that time I nabbed the crocodile killer. Turns out he was also the infamous jaw splitter. Looks like I've 
captured your interest. Excellent. Natalie, the moment I laid eyes on you, I knew exactly who you were. Lucas, oh, was it the gleam in my eye that gave it away? Madeline, it was the gate, confident and brisk, like you have no fear of being mugged around here. Lucas, now, now that the masks are down, metaphorically speaking, I'd appreciate if you could glance at this photo of one Milan Chirp. Madeline, that's a witch. What makes you think I know her? Lucas, that's a young witch. Most likely not born here, but brought from the nightmarish dimension we banish the witches to. And I've heard that information spreads quickly to you if a witch comes through. Madeline, and if I told you that I've seen her? Lucas, then I'd be very interested to learn more about her. Especially in connection to the murder of a file clerk that occurred earlier tonight. Madeline, murder? I can assure you that she's not involved in anyone's murder. Lucas, oh, and how can you be so certain? Madeline, because she's deceased. Uh, so unless you believe dead witches return as ghosts, she's not your culprit. Lucas, dead? Madeline, indeed, deceased. And that's all I know. Okay, well, what does Thunder know? This guy's been giving me the eye since I arrived. Maybe I should talk to him. Lucas, good evening. Enjoying your beer? Man, what's it to you? Lucas, just making conversation. Man, ellipsis. He's pretty evasive. Uh, can I show him this picture? That won't accomplish anything. Can I show him a pomegranate? That can't be right. Can I use my witch senses? No. Well, that's fine. Um, can I go anywhere else now? No one knew. Okay. Is there nothing else to talk about? Uh, Lucas, do you know the cause of her death? Madeline, I do not. All I know is that it was gruesome. Lucas, gruesome? Someone wanted to make a statement, perhaps. Madeline, as I said, I can't tell you anything more. Lucas, sounds like a crime of passion. Madeline, indeed, it does seem that way. Lucas, I must admit, it's quite perplexing. Madeline, is it now? Lucas, it's not every day you come across a murdered witch. Usually, it's the witches who are the perpetrators. Madeline, you've read it all in those books, haven't you? Perhaps it's time you opened your eyes. It was us who banished the witches, not the other way around. Have you ever wondered how many of them perished during the banishment? Far more than you can imagine. Lucas, joining a dangerous cult, one can't expect it to be all daffodils and sunshine, can one? Madeline, ellipsis. Okay, um, we're de definitely being very cop at the moment, aren't we? Ju something said juice, juice. It's not. I'm not much of a juice fan. I stick to coffee. Okay. Um, I already got one pomegranate. Thunder. Okay, we can't can't do anything with thunder. Um, I think we should save, don't we? In slot two. Okay. Um, go back to the Chief Inspector. Lucas, ready for this? Madeline believes Mion Chirp's dead. Chief Inspector. Oh, is she now? <laughs> she got any hard evidence to back that up? Lucas, none that she has presented. Chief Inspector. Well, this might just hand us a motive. Another witch could have knocked off Anthony Maxwell out of vengeance. Uh, speaking of the devil, the morgue's got the body prepped. I'd like you to head over and examine it for secrets. See what else you can find. Lucas, I'm all over it. Okay, so potential gore coming up, I suppose, if we're inspecting a, a body. So just to let everybody know there. Ah, the morgue. Some weeks. It's my second home. Beating even the bar. Oof, that's depressing. Um, and those are the weeks I'd rather forget. Last Tuesday, someone's tongue put on a fireworks show. They say it's the handiwork of a local devil making a comeback. The morgue surprises come packaged in all shapes and sizes. Right, so Anthony's body is there. The autopsy light is there. The crematorium is there. Um, freezer A and freezer B are there. The medicine cabinet is there. Exhaust fan is there. Mm, this might be a bit gruesome. Uh, let's put these on. Who hasn't picked up anything but I can already see? Um, okay, what's in freezer A? I doubt they have roast beef stashed away in here. Nope, a couple of bodies. The first one belongs to Yargo Ellsworth. 
Let's see how he ended up here. It reads, Bargain Buds Polar Bear Challenge Regional Runner-Up. Just five minutes short of a lifetime supply of bacon-flavoured diet cream soda. The second body belongs to Philip uh, de Gistafara um, Boseca. Apparently, he was involved in a bizarre root beer incident. Strange. Oh, it's... Oh, okay, sorry. Oh, there's two... Oh, it's two boys in each. Oh my... Oh, there's... Wow, they really stack them up. Don't they? Let's read that again, because I... First one belongs to Jap, who or Yap, who apparently died from eating too much candy. I can relate. Second body belongs to Jay Holmes. It says he choked on his own laughter. When my tongue comes, that's how I'd like to go. The third body belongs to Chan Armstrong. It says he was crushed by a 16 ton weight. And that's why I never go to the gym. Okay. I feel like they might have been some supporters of the game. Um, what's in the medicine cabinet? The majority of the items here are intended for post-mortem care. One item stands out. The pathologist might utilise chlorhexidine gluconate solution for personal disinfection. The label indicates ultra. This could be the most potent disinfectant on the market. Might be of use. And of course, I'll just help myself to this scalpel here. You never know when it might prove useful. All right. Great. Um, I guess we put the light on. The light is already on, casting luminance upon Anthony Maxwell's lifeless mug. Exhaust fan. The fan isn't running right now. They probably switch it on when there's a need to handle any odour buildup. Anthony's body. The pathologist's report reveals the presence of 13 uh, 0.45 ACP bullets in Anthony Maxwell's stomach. This fits my expectations thus far, which is typically target their victims with an odd number of bullets, and the calibre of the bullets points to a Tommy gun as the likely weapon. The greater the number of bullets found, the more fervent the witch's rage. Whatever Anthony had done, he must have really pissed off that witch. The report's final section details the last meal, comprising squid, crab and lobsters. Okay, uh, there's a local fish market where all three can be found, a visit might be in order. Uh, beyond this, the report offers no further insights. I think that's all we can do here then. Uh, I might need a different approach. I'm grasping the straws here. Okay, so these are all for different purposes. Um, which vision doesn't do anything? Alright, let's go to the fish market, which is uh, here. Hey, oh, look at the lovely. Look how the colours pop on the seafood. Crab. I've only ever had crabs in the form of crab cakes. Apparently, their claws are highly desired by occultists. Lobsters. I was never a fan of lobster. These ones seem like they're trying to escape. I don't blame them. How about this little squid? Squid used to be a hard pass for me. The slimy texture was a deal breaker. Yet I've grown fond of them. Seafood vendor. Shall I pack you one from the crate? Lucas. Yes, please. The vendor proceeds to fetch a fresh squid from the crate. Well, I've got a squid as well. What am I going to do with all this stuff? Okay, there's crates. I'm not sure what she stores in those crates. But my guess is it's more of the same. Seafood vendor. I think that's the only thing we can do. Good evening. Quite an interesting selection you have here. Do you often get many customers at this hour? Uh, seafood vendor, you'd be surprised. It's not uncommon for someone to wake up in the middle of the night. Remember his mother-in-law is coming in a few hours and they desperately need to prepare crab soup because that just happens to be her favourite dish. At 2am, says Lucas. That seems far-fetched. At 2am I don't even dream about my mother-in-law. Which incidentally, I don't have. Though, there, there was that one time I woke up at 4am craving squid, seafood vendor. And what did you do about that? Lucas, I polished off the last of the vanilla ice cream. It was either that, or that unidentifiable, unidentifiable browning thing at the back of the freezer. Honestly, I couldn't tell what it used to be. But captivating as my culinary adventures are, that's not why I'm here tonight. Earlier today, a man made a curious purchase. Squid, lobster and crabs. Does that ring a bell? Seafood vendor. This is a seafood market. Squid, lobster and crabs are in high demand. Plenty of people buy them here. Lucas. All three at once. That's quite a seafood feast. Seafood vendor. It's not too unusual. We get customers like that from time to time. Lucas. Alright, let's narrow it down. I'm talking about a man in his late 30s with unruly brown hair. He bought squid, lobster and crabs all together today. 
seafood vendor. Uh, I think I may know who you're talking about. Uh, but what's it to you? You a copper? Lucas, close enough. I'm a sentinel. Seafood vendor, a sentinel? Poking around the seafood market? Are you expecting to find gremlins or something? Lucas, maybe not gremlins, no. But I can't ignore the possibility of something else lurking around. What can you tell me about that man? Seafood vendor, there's not much to tell. He arrived around 8pm, pointed to the seafood he wanted, paid, and left. Lucas, did he appear anxious or uneasy in any way? Seafood vendor, if anything, he seemed lifeless, expressionless, you know. Lucas, was he alone? Seafood vendor, no, he had a woman with him. Lucas, interesting. Can you describe her appearance? Seafood vendor, I couldn't tell you even if I wanted to. She wore a cloak that concealed most of her face. I assumed it was due to the Luciferian pandemic. Uh, you know how some folks still cover themselves up. I doubt that was a medical cloak. I suspect it served another purpose. Uh, you don't think she was, says the seafood vendor. I'm not jumping to any conclusions at the moment, says Lucas. Thank you for your cooperation. So it appears Anthony spent the evening with a mysterious woman. Now the question is, was it the one who ended his life, or someone else, entirely? The chief inspector would undoubtedly want to know about this. Let's hightail it back to Zephyr Lodge. Okay, Chief Inspector. Lucas. Anthony's last meal was a seafood feast. I hit up the seafood market. Turns out he'd been in the company of a woman wrapped in a cloak. Chief Inspector. A cloak. Then we have a potential witch. Lucas. That's my suspicion as well. Chief Inspector. It's time to turn up the heat on Madeline. Hick. If a witch has resurfaced in our dimension, and a dangerous one at that, Madeline likely knows more than she's revealed. I think you should pay her another visit. Lucas, I'm already on the move. Okay. Uh, that was... Tutbury? How you doing, Thunder? There's nothing I want from him. But what if we give him squid? That can't be right. What if I give him a scalpel? That won't accomplish anything. What if I give him some disinfectant? I might have a, diff a different approach. Okay. Uh, let me put this back. Let me, put, let me put this back, please, game. Thank you. Sort to Madeline again. Lucas, hello again, Madeline. Hope you're up for a little more chat. Uh, I've already told you everything, Sentinel. Consider this. Helping me could bring justice to the victim. Madeline, sorry, but I've got nothing more to add. She rem remains tight-lipped. Maybe a softer touch will do the trick. That man over there has been keeping an eye on me. Maybe he's got some answers for me. Well, I've been trying to talk to him for ages. Okay, here we go. Lucas, hey there, enjoying a drink? Man, seems like you've been bothering the lady over there. Can you let her do a thing in peace? Bothering? Says Lucas. I'm on the trail of a murder case. You wouldn't happen to know anything about any shady business that went down today, would you? Man, I don't know a thing, man. Lucas, that's very convenient, Mr. Man, call me Thunder. So, Thunder, I bet you know something, or you wouldn't be chatting me up. Thunder, remember just killing time. Ain't much for us downtrodden souls to do in this city. Lucas, so you're bored, huh? Is that what you're saying? Thunder, could be. Lucas, alright then. Doesn't look like we're going to get far with this conversation. That wasn't very helpful. Uh, would, you like a, would you now like a pomegranate? No? Alright. Uh, what about this? Okay, no. Uh, which senses? No. Um, Lucas, I reckon he's got some info, but it looks like he's itching for a bit of excitement before he's willing to spill the beans. Well, squid then, obviously. Or we could have a knife fight. What was I thinking? Well, I don't, I don't know what else to do. I am grasping at straws. Okay. Uh, well, let's... Hang on. Oh, that, that's the description of that. Talk to Madeline again? Hello again, Madeline. Hope you're up for a little more chat. Madeline, I've already told you everything, Sentinel. Lucas, considering this, consider this. Helping me could bring justice to the victim. Madeline, sorry, but I've got nothing more to add. Um, maybe a softer touch will do the trick. That, mm, I'm not quite sure what... To do here, we can save again. I don't know if there's any failure states in this game. There might be. Um, K. 
can I open the pomegranate? I'll handle the slicing when it's needed. Can I cut the squid? I can't be right. Can I cut the... No? Can I cut the picture? Okay. Uh, what if we go to... The crime scene again? I've already taken the photo with the young witch. Can I... I'm not sure of the, of the the uses for these items. Um. Well, hang on. Let's see. I don't think I. Th oh, I didn't mean to go to the seafood market, but that's fine. Anything more? According to her, Anthony Maxwell shopped here at about 8pm. He was accompanied by a woman who had her face almost entirely covered with a cloak. Okay, I think we've done everything we can do there. Uh, let's, can we click everything on Madeline? No, she doesn't want squid. Does she want a sample? No. Does she want disinfectant? No, excuse me, excuse me. Inventory. Can I disinfect the... No. Can I disinfect the... No. Can I disinfect Madeline? No. Pomegranate. I think she's got plenty. Um, good idea. I'd best show her the photo when I talk to her. Okay. Um, oh, maybe I need to do witch sensors at the seafood market? Did I do that before? No. Uh, let's go back to, if in doubt, go back to the um, inspector. Chief inspector, these witches scheming their return. <laughs> Still here, Lucas. When you heading to Tipperary Avenue for a little chat with Madeline? I was, but I can't get chat to happen. Maybe if I sniped a beer? No. No. Can I take your cassette? No. No. Can I turn your TV off? No. Can I have your egg? No. No. All right, so I don't think there is anything else to do. This is in the morgue. Um, so, oh, hang on. I did get the cassette. Oh, I missed that dialogue. Oh, sorry, because I thought it was going to be the same dialogue. But I, I got a cassette. I've got the cassette. I don't need the VHS case itself. Oh. Well, in that case, that changes everything. Got a VCR? Thunder. Got four of them. Lucas. Who has four V... Anyway. Here you go. Gunslingers and sweethearts in the Wild West. The latest in home entertainment. Thunder. Isn't that Quentin Tarantino's latest flick? Been a while since I've seen a good movie. Thanks. Lucas. Now let's talk about what you don't know about what happened earlier today. Well, I don't have much to offer, only that some folks miss their old homes. Lucas, go on. Thunder, and others take pity on them, helping them cross over. Lucas, that's what I suspected. Thunder, you see, some folks give so much, they forget to take care of themselves. Thunder, so when they finally head to the pharmacy or such, they can't find what they need due to the shortages. Gets a person mighty anxious, doesn't it? Lucas, I reckon it might... What did that mean? Madeline? Uh, okay. From Thunder's tangled words, I gather Madeline's been facing difficulties in acquiring her pharmacy supplies lately. Uh, okay. Do we, do we now go back to the inspector? These witches. When you're heading to Tupbury Avenue for a little... Oh, I see. I've got... Technically, I would have supplies. So now I can give her... Looks like the Luciferian plague still has you con concerned. Madeline, with over a million lives lost to that dreadful disease, I won't be taking any chances. Lucas, that's why I thought you might find this helpful. It's the most potent disinfectant around. The stuffed pathologists use. 
Matter, thank you. Your thoughtfulness is much appreciated. Lucas, safety first, especially considering your line of work. Madeline, ain't that the truth? Lucas, I was wondering if you'd be more inclined to talk to me now. Madeline, alright, what do you need to know? Lucas, I've got reason to believe a witch, or maybe even two, have recently crossed over to our dimension. Lucas, one of them might be linked to a murder that occurred today. Madeline, for a sentinel, you don't seem to know much about witches, do you? Lucas, they're a pretty secretive bunch. Madeline, witches leave a hidden message engraved on the hearts of their victims. Madeline, they utter fiery words that leave an invisible verse behind. You'll need to cut it out and burn it with a bloodless crimson liquid. Right? Uh, then a dark substance will reveal the verses left behind. This might give you the answers you seek. A rather dark method, but I appreciate your help, Madeline. Right, so I think we need to go and do this ritual at the morgue. So I think the, the gore's about to come up. Alright. Alright, time to dig deep. Anthony's heart, I can almost feel its final beat. What should I do next? Well, let's... Uh, pomegranate juice. Uh, pomegranate juice on heart. I've retrieved the heart as the first step. Now the second step is to soak it with a bloodless crimson liquid. Done. And then... Uh, I think you burn it, right? Fingers crossed. There, the heart has been burned. Okay, his heart now burned. Use with the sp spectacles. No. Uh, how do I look at the heart now? Oh, do I? Is, how, what do I do now? Do I need to freeze it? No. What? Do I need to squid it? Hope this does the trick. Oh yes, you need dark ink. Oh sorry, I thought it produced a dark ink, but we need dark ink. I hope this does the trick. Well Madeline and I will need to have a serious talk. Squid's ink seems to have done the trick. A fiery message has appeared on the heart. It reads Faceless. I play a role. Kiss me to stir my soul. Faceless, I play a role. I wonder what that means. Um let's go back to the boss. We've got a heart. It's pretty gory. Chief Inspector, 32 channels and absolutely nothing to watch. <laughs> oh, that, that it? Movie's ended. The Chief is now engrossed in a sports broadcast. Oh, I see. I missed all that, didn't I? Can I have the egg now? No, can't. Um, Alright, so now what do I do? Which is mask? The verse reads, Faceless, I play a role. That must reference the mask. The second part reads, Kiss me to stir my soul. Ugh, kissing a witch's mask. Uh, let's just get it done with. Tastes just like I would have expected. Mask, well, well, look who's woken me up with a kiss. A real sleepy beauty, huh? Now tell me, where's your owner? Mask, hold on, Sentinel. Don't push me. You know which is mask likes to take her time. If you hurry her, she can get unpredictable. Lucas, you don't need to intimidate me, Mask. If you don't want me to chuck you in the crematorium too, you better start talking. Mask, oh my, my. You'd reckon folks would fear Masks more, seeing as our wearers commune with devils. Lucas, all you Masks are alike, talking without end. Why'd your wearer go after Anthony Maxwell? What did he ever do to deserve our attention? Mask. Ah, that's something you'll have to ask her yourself, my dear Sentinel. Lucas, where can I find her? Mask, I could tell you, but where's the fun in that? Instead, I'll share a verse of my own. Decipher it, and you'll learn her whereabouts. Let's see if you can crack this. Better put on your thinking cap. Twirl a skull and boil a gull. Then sing and scorn and blow the horn. That's an easy one, says Lucas. Is it Sentinel? Your wearer left this poor excuse of a riddle with you. She's clearly wanted me to find her. So what's the answer then? Lucas, the voice points to the old Cowling mansion once owned by Ivan Cowling, a renowned theatre actor famous for starring in Blackburn's plays. 
Different, different lines refer to Blackburn's most notable works. Twirl a Skull refers to The Undertaker. Boiler Gull is about the fisherman, where the protagonist contracts the dreaded boils disease. And Sing and Scorn must be referring to the jester. And Blow the Horn, says the mask. That part's obviously about De Horn, the actor's former surname. Uh, your mask, you're both a sentinel and a scholar, ain't you? Quite impressive. Lucas, right then. Time to catch up with your wearer. Mask, pass on my regards, Sentinel. Well, that was... <laughs> that was a strange interaction. So, is this the, is this the Cowling Mansion? Um, I'm glad I didn't have to solve that uh, particular riddle, because I think I would have struggled. The door to the abandoned Cowling Mansion creaked open, so I let myself in. It looked as I expected. Peeling paint, missing floorboards, and a musty smell from the mouldy wallpaper. Most of the mansion was dark except for one room on the second floor, the third door on the left. Surprisingly, that room was in excellent condition, as if someone cared to keep it livable. I have a feeling I'm not alone. <sighs> okay, there's a shield. Should we get the shield? A gleaming ornamental shield adorns the space above the fireplace. Okay, I can't get it. Um, should we save? We'll save. Uh, there's the vase. The slender, unembellished vase stands devoid of any contents. The fireplace. The fireplace logs show signs of recent burning, with embers still softly glowing on their surfaces. There's a bed. The bed is made, but I can tell someone has recently slept in it. Um, and then the closet. Within the closet, garments are impeccably folded, emitting a pleasant, fresh scent. I think it's time for witch eyes. Oh my goodness, it's a witch. This hasn't been much of a hide and seek, has it? Says Lucas. Witch. Ah, you've finally arrived. This night's been dragging on forever, says the witch. Lucas. It isn't this night you should be fretting about. It's the, it's the night they'll burn you at the stake. Which, there's that too. Lucas. So before I ask the all important question of you, why you did it, who are you? Which, my name's Bira. Lucas, any kin to Mion Chan? Bira, Mion was my younger sister. Lucas, she's dead then. Bira, has been for three months now. Lucas, you've left a crumb trail of clues from the scene of the crime to here. You wanted to get caught for the murder of Anthony Maxwell. Bira, want doesn't quite capture it. I reckoned if I can't escape, might as well allow myself to get caught than live in hiding. Hiding doesn't suit me. Lucas, why did you do it? Bira, and to the offered a way to blend in for those witches who sneaked back from the other dimension. No more would they need to hide their faces to conceal they were witches. They could don special plastic masks he made that would fit like a glove. Slap it on and no one would be the wiser. My sister got enchanted by the idea of leaving that hellish dimension, so she got one for herself. But An Anthony wasn't doing us witches any favours, you see. Soon enough, the witches wearing the ma his mask became sick and started dying, one after the other. First blood poured from their mouths, then their eyes. My sister had endured three days and three nights before she succumbed. Anthony poisoned the masks. He didn't want the witches returning. He wanted them dead. Any proof to back that up? asked Lucas. Bira. Anthony meticulously penned down his plan in his diary, which I have with me. I'm sure you have the means to confirm his handwriting. Leafing through the diary. Lucas. That devil. Bira. Are you taking me in now, Sentinel? Not that I'm in a hurry to see the stake, but I'm exhausted. It's been a long day. Lucas. Ellipsis. Pack up your things, including your Tommy gun and the mask from Anthony's apartment, and go. Bira, go where, Sentinel? Lucas, back to the other dimension. Bira, that option is not available to me, Sentinel. You see, while we witches figured out a way to travel here, the trick doesn't work when we want to go back. Lucas, ellipsis. Stay here then. Besides me, no one knows where to find you. Hmm, retrieving your Tommy gun and your mask from Anthony's place will put you at risk. I'll fetch those for you, but then you better hide well. I don't want to ever see or hear about you again. Bira, you're doing this for me? 
Why? Lucas, there's no justice for witches, only justice against witches. They'll burn you if I turn you in, no matter what Anthony did. Rest assured, if I find out this diary's a forgery, I'll come back for you. Goodbye, Bira. Stay low and keep out of trouble. <gasps> Tommy Gun Witches, a Cosmic Void game! Well, that was an intriguing... There's definitely there's an intriguing prospect in there. Um, I'd be interested in seeing a, a more fleshed out version of that world, I think. I enjoyed the um, the puzzles as well. Um, it was kind of an unexpected... Yeah, some of these people were in the morgue, weren't they? Yes, they were. Um, yeah. I yeah, I would like to see like a more developed um like contemporary contemporary fantasy city where um witches and demons and gremlins and things were sort of the the un lived in the underbelly of the city. Um there's yeah, there's definitely a lot of potential there. And I absolutely loved the uh, the pixel art. That was fantastic. Well, you know, I have directed you to Cosmic Void's itch page, so check them out because they have they're pretty prolific by the looks of it. Um, let's pop us back on here, and we oh no, we don't want all these. There we go. That's the things we want. Um, yeah. Uh, yes, please do check out Cosmic Void because they, um, they seem to be quite prolific in creating adventure games. And if the, the rest of them are anything like this one, um, they'll be quite interesting. Uh, apologies we didn't get any further with Ripper today. I will, yeah, I'll see if I can get it working better. And if I can, I'll probably have a crack at that as a let's play um, at some point. Um, this stream will be going up as a VOD, probably two VODs. I'll probably split the video. That'll be on YouTube, and it'll be automatically on Twitch for for a little while. Um, but I'll I'll revamp it slightly and put it on YouTube. If you um, have enjoyed this stream and would like to see more uh, playthroughs of adventure games, then do check out my channel because there are there are quite a few on there now. I'm in the midst of playing Amazon from 1999 currently, so the, probably the next video to go up after these vods will be the next episode of Amazon. Uh, probably in a week's time. We'll see. I've got a pretty busy week on, so it be might be slightly over a week, depending on how things go. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for your time. We've gone over a little bit, but I'm really pleased to have seen the things we've seen. It's been it's been really nice, and um, happy Halloween to everybody. Um, stay safe, and um, until next time, take care. Bye bye. <laughs>